Happy Sabbath. Right on time. <laughs> I got lost here. I went to the wrong way. Colorado, that way. But the number was increasing. It was a perfect number, like 777. <laughs> so I turned around, looking for that perfect number. Happy Sabbath, and um, it is great to be here today, this weekend. And I believe this is my first time at, in this Filipino church. I was here before? <laughs> I did? Long time ago. Okay. Well, this weekend we have a very important topics that is so relevant to our, to our days that we're living in. So before we get into our Bible study, I'd like to invite you to pray with me. Please bow your hands. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this peaceful time when we can come together to study the Bible and open our hearts to seek your truth. As we dive into your word, teach us to search our hearts deeper, that we may see your face see your character, and to understand who we are before your sight. So enlighten us, open our hearts, open our minds. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight's topic, Michael shall stand. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. Um, I'm just curious. Do any of you have this Daniel Revelation phobia? Your brain, your, your mind, your brain goes into semi-coma when you hear this word Daniel Revelation because it's so complex, so deep, so too much for you. And so we are feeling that brain freeze right now. And I'm not talking about you know, eating ice cream. And if you feel this way at this time, send another prayer to God. Amen. And claim the promise. If you ask, He will give it to you, right? Amen. If you lack wisdom, He can give it to you. If you believe without wavering, what do you say? And to believe that you are able to understand yeah. deep things in the Bible. And it doesn't matter what kind of grades you had in the past. Forget about those grades. It's American education anyhow. Okay? It doesn't matter. <laughs> what does matter? That we know the Bible. What do you say? Amen. So, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And tonight we are not going to study that much. You see, what I like to do is to teach a lot more than to preach. So I really want you to understand what you are reading in your hands. Okay? So in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, is that. And at that time shall Michael. Stand up. And tonight's topic, Michael, stand up. That's all. When we understand who is 
Michael. And then, if we can understand what it means when he stands up, then we can rightly study the first three phrases or three words. And, forget that one, at that time. What time is that? At that time, who? Michael, what is he going to do? Stand up. Stand up. What does that mean? And I'm not sure what you, how much you studied the book of Daniel before. And if I ask you a question, in the book of Daniel, chapter 1 through 12, which chapter, where do, would you like to say that is the climactic point in the book of Daniel? Many of you may say Daniel 8.14, like any other good Seventh-day Adventist. And God bless you for that. However, if you ask me, I have to say Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Because when Michael stands up, somehow, for some reason, that means everything is done. To me, that is a climactic point in the book of Daniel. Everything leads up to this particular declaration, this phrase, at that time. What time is that? We're going to figure that out tomorrow. But we've got to figure out who is Michael and what does it mean when he stands up. Are we together? Yeah. Not too hard, right? Even third grade can understand this. Amen? Yeah. All right. Number one, who is Michael? Jesus. Now, that's a good answer. That's the right answer. But listen, you have to have some Bible text. It's okay. I know this is a big auditorium, but you can shout out if you need to. Give me a Bible text that says, Michael is Jesus. Good thing we don't have any pop up after this meeting, huh? We have all time. Yeah. By the way, this is Seventh day Adventist church, right? People that study the Bible a lot. I can prove everything from the Bible. Yeah. Give me a Bible text. Michael is Jesus. Just help me with just one Bible text. Jude. Jude. Oh, very good. But that's not enough. Well, Revelation chapter 12, it just says Michael is fighting the dragon. It doesn't really explain Michael. Do you really want to use that text? Yeah, go ahead. Last. Okay, let's put these verses together. Are we ready? What you need to do, listen, please, when you listen to this presentation, I'm not here to just to excite you, nor to spiritually entertain you. You are not here this weekend just to hear another wonderful, good sermon. You have to know that time is now for you to be equipped spiritually equipped but in order to be spiritually equipped your intellectual understanding of the Bible has to be solid yeah. so whatever you believe you need to be able to back it up if you cannot support what you believe you may change what you believe think about that if you cannot show me what you believe is true from the Bible you may change. So, let's, here's my, there are, I'm sure there are many ways to explain who's Michael. And yes, Michael is mentioned in the book of Daniel. And we can use that. But here's one way they can show who Michael is. In the book of Jude, go there. It's a tiny book just before the book of Revelation. 
Jude. In fact, they, they could have called this book, book of Jude, Judas, Judas, Jude, same thing. But don't panic, it's not that Judas, okay? All right, here we go. Jude, verse 9, the Bible says, Yet Michael, the what? Archangel. You can read the rest of the text, but all we know about the archangel in the Bible text, excuse me, all we know about Michael in the text is what? Who is Michael? Archangel. That's all we have. Michael is Archangel. Now what we need to do, study more about Archangel. What do you say? Yeah? So, okay, Michael is Archangel. By the way, before we continue, what does it mean? Archangel. It sounds nice, right? What does that mean? English is not my first language, so American people, please help me to understand. <laughs> Commander, Ark, means the leader, the chief, the head, commander. All right, Archangel. So Michael is the leader of? The angels. All right, that's what it means. All right, let's continue. Come with me to... First Thessalonians. So, so in the book of Jude, we have to establish this fact. Michael is archangel. I mean, that is crystal clear. Then you go to, by the way, we want to study more about archangel, right? So you start searching archangel in the Bible, and you come to this particular Bible text in the New Testament, First Thessalonians. Chapter 4, verse 16. All right. I'm going to read this Bible text. Then I'm going to ask you a very simple question. Nothing profound, deep, or spiritually complicated. Nothing like that. Very simple question about the archangel, okay? So, here we go. Let's read it first. The Bible says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. First, stop right there. In that, in that Bible text, within that verse, what do we know about archangel? I'm asking you a very simple question. Nothing complicated, not too deep, it's right there. What do we know about Archangel according to this Bible text? Voice. Voice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we got, right? The Bible says the voice of Archangel. I know you may think that should be the obvious thing. You know, angels, a leader of all angels, he should be, you know, he should have voice. I understand that should be an obvious thing. But when it is described in the Bible, you need to pay attention. If you say this man has two arms, pay attention. If the Bible says that. There's a reason why the Bible says this man has two arms. Okay? So, what do we know about Archangel in 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 4, verse 16? He has voice. All right. The voice of Archangel, according to this Bible text, something happens because of his voice. What happens? The dead in Christ shall rise first. So, the voice of Archangel can do what? Raise the dead, yes or no? Yes. Are we together? Yes. Am I making things up? <laughs> no, right? Okay. There are too many 
I think there are too many religious people just making things up from the Bible. Please, let's, let's not do that. So, voice of the archangel, the shout of the, from the, the Lord is coming with great shout, voice of archangel, and the trump of God, all of them combined, including the voice of archangel, it can raise the dead. dead. Keep that in mind. So, who is Michael? Let's review. Who is Michael? Archangel. archangel. Voice of archangel can do what? Raise the dead. Raise the dead. But you know, it is always better to confirm something is true if you have more than one witness. Because Jesus said, based on witnesses of two or three, every word or every truth is being established. Are you listening? So, who wrote Thessalonians? Paul. So Paul says, Paul says, voice of archangel can raise the dead. So do we have one more witness that says archangel can raise the dead? In fact, yes. The, the verse that we were just on. Go back to Jude. Jude, verse 9. Jude, verse 9. Are you there? Are you there? Okay. Jude, verse 9. Here we go. Yet yeah, Michael the archangel, when contending with the who? The devil. He disputed about the body of Moses. So tell me from the Bible, Michael and who? Yeah. Devil. What were they doing? Disputing. What's that mean? Arguing, Arguing about what? The body. the body of Moses. When the Bible says the body of Moses, what is that talking about? When it says body, what, what is that? Body of Moses. I think some other translation it says corpse of Moses. So they're fighting over dead body of Moses. Why they, so why is Jesus fighting the devil over the dead body of Moses? What do you uh, what can you get? Where is Moses today? In heaven. Did Moses die? Yes. That means he got Resurrected. So, Michael fighting over the body of Moses, that means Michael is trying to do what? Raise Moses to life. Here we have another confirmation. Are we together? Michael the archangel, he does what? Raise the dead. Are we good so far? Okay, so what do we know about Michael? His archangel. What can he do? He can raise the dead. All right, then who is this archangel? Don't just jump to say Jesus. You have to reason things out. Don't go too fast. Okay, I know you live in California, but don't go too fast. All right. Some reasoning. Huh. So someone can say, someone can say, whoa, archangel can raise the dead. Angel can raise the dead. Angels can raise the dead. True or false? Ah. Uh, if angels can raise the dead, what does that mean about Lucifer? Ah, uh, no, right? Okay, okay, okay. So we have to make some, okay, some, Qualifications, meaning, according to the Bible, only who can raise the dead? Beautiful Jesus, but give me a Bible text. Revelation one eighteen. How do you know that Jesus is the only one? The best text that I know. I mean, 
You may have a better text, God bless you if you do. But the one that I think is pretty good, I mean, pretty solid, is in the book of Revelation. Come with me. To the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. By the way, do we have some non adventists here tonight? Buddhist, Hindu, Islam, New Age? Anybody? Non-Christians? Atheists? God bless you. Thank you for coming. Make sure you get a free lunch tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 1. And look with me. Verse 18. Are you there? Okay, by the way, just to save some time, unless you can be here until midnight, just to save some time, um, verse 18, when it says, I am he that liveth, Jesus is talking here. And that is clear. If you want to know to confirm that, just read the rest of the chapter. Then you will see. Jesus is speaking, and he said, I am he that what? Liveth, meaning he's living, and was dead, meaning he got resurrected, was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. He will continue to live forevermore. Okay. Then he says, Amen. And he says, have the what? Keys. What do you do with keys? You open the door, you close it, right? You open it or you lock it. I uh, have the keys of what? Hell. The word hell, uh, if you're not familiar with this, you're thinking hell meaning like burning fire. Well, in the Greek language, the, the word hell just simply means grave. So it says, have the keys of hell or grave and of death. So according to the book of Revelation, who has the keys to hell and death? Jesus. That means he can close it and he can open it. So only Jesus, he has the authority, keys to resurrect. Are we together? Only Jesus. And we are going to confirm this by reading John 11. John 11, the famous story about raising uh, Lazarus from the tomb, and Jesus said, regarding himself, John chapter 11, verse 25, he said, look at this, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He said, I am the resurrection and life. He has the keys of hell and death. And then, John chapter 5. This text will just bring everything together in good, nice conclusion. John chapter 5 and verse 28. Are you there? The Bible says, marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the wind. Grain shall hear his voice. Again, contextually speaking, when the Bible says his voice, it is talking about the voice of the Son of God or Son of Man, Jesus. His voice, voice of Jesus. What happens? 29, and shall come forth. They that have done good unto resurrection of life. There you go. So, Revelation chapter 1 says, Jesus has the keys to hell and death. John chapter 11 says, He is the, He said, He said, I am the resurrection of life. And John chapter 5 makes it very clear by His voice, death can be resurrected. So, then. We already, we already disqualified this conclusion about anybody where all angels can raise the dead. 
So the question is, only who can raise the dead? According to the Bible, Jesus. Only His voice. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Voice of Archangel. So therefore, we have to conclude the voice of Archangel has to be Jesus, because only Jesus, His voice, can raise the dead. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, that's how you show Michael is Jesus. Amen. That was like, um, what, 20 minutes? 25 minutes? Do you feel like we just waste our time? But some of you are thinking, oh, Michael, Archangel, Archangel, Jesus. So Jesus is angel. So he's not God? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, so, please don't go there. I understand. If you're thinking that way, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, because that's what it says, right? But keep this in mind, keep this in mind. When you study the whole Bible, there are more than 200 names and descriptions for Jesus. Did you know that? Yeah. Just to give you a few, in the Bible, he is called the branch. And don't tell me he is literally a branch. Branch. Twig. Literally. He can bend. Is he? No, no, no. The Bible says he is the Lamb of God. Don't tell me he is literally, you know, a really nice beast. The Bible says he is the rock. Please don't tell me he is rock. Do you understand? When the Bible says he is the rock, he is the foundation. He is the Lamb of God. He is the sacrifice. He is the branch. He is the life giver. Are you with me? Yes. He is one that connects, brings righteousness to you. Yeah. So Archangel, just Archangel is one of his many names. So Archangel or Michael, what is that describing? It is describing Jesus as the captain of all angels. Are you with me? He's the captain of all the angels in heaven. That's all. Now, if you want to go a little deeper, the name Michael. Do, how many Michaels? Do we have Michaels here tonight? Any Michaels? Yeah? Are Filipinos like the Korean people? Name all their children Michael and John? <laughs> David, Samuel? That's the reason why we have so many John Cho, John Kim. We have some Michaels here tonight. Do you know the meaning of your name? Michael. No, it does not mean Archangel. <laughs> I mean, literally speaking, I mean, according to the Hebrew background, Michael means one that is like unto God. That's what he means. That's what he means. And who is he? Jesus. And that name is to describe him as a captain or the captain over all the angels. So going back to Daniel chapter 12, verse 5, at that time, Michael, now we know who Michael is. Yes. Jesus. And the Bible says, Jesus, but because the Bible described our Savior, the Bible could have said, and at that time, Shall Jesus stand up? Yes or no? Yes. You may say, oh, that's not possible because that was in the Old Testament. Okay, okay. How about this? And at, at the time, shall Emmanuel stand up? Yeah? Still makes sense, right? Still makes sense. Or you can say, at the time, um, the Messiah will stand up. Yes? Yeah. But, see, every detail is there for a specific purpose. If a captain, Michael's a captain, yes? yes. Uh, by the way, 
is very interesting, very interesting, in the book of Revelation chapter 12, verse 6 and 7, Michael is mentioned, and what is he doing? Fighting. Jude, verse 9, Michael is mentioned, what is he doing? Fighting. Michael is mentioned in Daniel chapter 10, what is he doing? Fighting. Who is Michael? He's a captain. He's in a battle, in war. Are you with me? All right, so when Michael stands up, what can you conclude? What can you guess? I know your guess can be totally wrong, but just try to guess. It's okay. Have courage. Battle is over. Battle is over, so you fight sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Michael stands up. What can you get? What can you get? Huh? He's going to. He's going to fight, right? He's going to war. He's going to fight. I'm sure it's got to be something like that, right? But if the Bible says that Emmanuel stands up, it gives you the idea of, oh, God is going to be with us now, yeah. The Lamb of God stands up. Oh, he's going to, he's going to make the final sacrifice. Yes. Are you listening? The branch is standing up. That's kind of weird, but... Uh, <laughs> everything is there for a specific purpose. Yes? So Michael stands up. He's about to go fight. It's got to be something like that. But let's study a little bit more. Okay, so we got Michael. Are we, are we good? Now, let's go into... The understanding of what does it mean? Stand up. Stand up. What does that mean? Authority. Yeah. Whenever you study the Bible, I know this phrase, stand up, is a very simple phrase. It's not a big deal, but stand up. <laughs> How can you have spiritual revival from that phrase, stand up? Um, but it's always good, always good to not overlook even simple phrases like that. Now, I'm not saying you should go and study every time of is mentioned. I'm not, that's too much. <laughs> or the word and. I want to study and in every, every text in the Bible. That's too much. Okay? You may go a little crazy. Don't, don't do that. But stand up. It's a simple phrase, but what, is, what, what does it mean according to the Bible? According to the Bible expression. Yeah? According to Bible expression. In, in Korea, in Korea, you're sitting down eating and somebody comes. If you stand up, you know what that means? It's, you know, you're Asians. We have many Asians here tonight. It's to show respect, right? Yeah. So in different culture, different, you know, different settings, we have different um, connotations. So according to the Bible, what does it mean? And the best place to, to, to look for the... The contextual meaning is in the book of Daniel. And believe it or not, that phrase, stand up, is used a lot in Daniel chapter 11. And I'm going to tell you this tomorrow. It's not a big secret, but Daniel 11 is connected to Daniel 12. And please don't look at me like, that was so profound. <laughs> but, but don't miss that. Daniel 11 is the, it's the prelude. In Daniel 11, just to show to you, look with me. Daniel 11. Are you there? Daniel 11, in verse 2, in a sense, it begins with these phrases, 
stand up. Let me show you. Verse 2. And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall what? Stand up. Stand up yet three kings in Persia. So who's standing up? Kings. All right. Verse 3. And a mighty king shall what? Stand up. Stand up. See that? So who's standing up again? King. And verse 4. When he shall what? Stand up. You see, again and again and again in the book of, Rebel, uh, in the book of Daniel chapter 11, you will see this phrase, stand up, stand up, stand up. So then, the meaning behind that phrase, stand up, should be the same in chapter 11 and chapter 12. Are you with me? And in chapter 11, it's usually king or a political power. Stand up. And what does it mean, stand up? It just simply means his political power, his dominion, his kingdom is beginning. That's what it means. Again, we can go through the whole thing. We don't have time. You can always go back and study chapter 11. It would be a wonderful chapter to read just before you go to bed. <laughs> if you're not interested, you fall asleep just like that. <laughs> Guaranteed. Only those who are really diligently searching for the truth will stay up all night. And that's okay. Amen. So, when you study Daniel 11, you'll see this phrase, stand up, stand up, stand up. And it is talking about this political power starting, this kingdom starting, this nation starting. Yes? So then, based upon that background of that phrase, stand up, what does it mean when the Bible says, Michael shall stand up? What does that mean? His power, his dominion, his kingdom is about to what? About to start. Exactly. Exactly. And Daniel 12, verse 1, it says, And at that time shall Michael, sh shall Michael stand up, the great what? Prince. Prince. There you go. Not only is a captain, but he is also called Prince. Prince. And I'm sure Prince should be the leader of all his army, so to speak. All right. So then, Michael, stand up. So what does it mean now? Kingdom of Michael begins. Kingdom of Jesus begins. Or kingdom of God begins. Are you with me? So if we put the whole thing together, chapter 11 and chapter 12, this will be happy, okay? Chapter 11, you have mentioning of the kingdom of Persia, stand up, right? And the kingdom of Greece, stand up. The kingdom of Rome, stand up. King of the north, stand up. And then there's a, and there's a uh, battle between king of the north, king of the south, king of the north, king of the south, stand up. And then, after all these earthly Worldly, mega, superpower nation, all right? But at the end, Michael, what? Standing up, meaning kingdoms of the world is about to, to be done, to be, to be vanished. And now is the time for the kingdom of God to, to start, to, to be established. Are, are we together? I'll be together. Yeah. So at the end, Michael says, it is enough. It's a time for the kingdom of God to be set up. Yeah. And it's complete. It's finished. And I'm coming back as king of kings and the lord of lords. Yeah. Yeah. This is the idea. Are you able to follow what we are doing here tonight? Yeah. No way. But there's a deeper meaning. <laughs> there's a deeper meaning. 
Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you a very simple question, and I am expecting a simple answer, okay? So to, don't go too deep. Not too deep. The Bible says, at that time, Michael shall stand. What was he doing before? Thank you so much. <laughs> I know this is not a, doesn't sound so profound, right? We cannot start a new church with Michael sitting down. You know, it's not that profound. <coughs> but you know, I'm a simple guy with simple questions. What does it mean then? All right, now we understood. Michael, stand up. His kingdom begins. Okay, we got that. But maybe we can understand the deeper meaning of Michael, stand up. If you understand what it means when Jesus was sitting down. Are you with me? Yeah, because Jesus sitting down is the opposite of Jesus standing up, yes? So what does it mean, Jesus sitting down? So, in the Bible, in the Bible, do we have any Bible verses that, that talks about Jesus sitting down in heaven? Do we have any Bible verses like that? Yeah, you got it. You got it. Uh, come with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Are you there? Yeah. Hebrews 12 and verse 2. And if you're worrying about tomorrow's potluck, please don't worry about tomorrow's potluck, okay? Ponce can be ready in a short time. <laughs> okay, Hebrews chapter 12. Are you there? Yeah. And verse 2, the Bible says, Looking unto... Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despite the shame is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. All right. So here we have a Bible text. So the Bible says, after the death of Jesus, after his resurrection, when Jesus went up to heaven, where did he go? Yes, heaven, but where did he go? At the right hand of God. But what is he doing there? The Bible says he sat down at the right hand of God. Yes? Okay. I know. Some of you are thinking, oh, that's all Jesus is doing? Just sitting around? That's all he's doing? You know, <clears throat> truthfully, I cannot imagine Jesus sitting down for more than 2,000 years. <laughs> now, now that is the, the Bible expression. Bible expressed Jesus in heaven as sitting down at the right hand of God. Okay? Perhaps, literally speaking, He's standing up, sitting down. That I don't know. But to describe what Jesus is doing in heaven, perhaps this, this may be more spiritually broad. Meaning, it says, He is sitting down at the right hand of God. Are you with me? Okay, so I don't have this you know, blocked in idea that that's all He's doing, sitting down. No, there's... Something very important. So, let's get clear. So when Jesus went up to heaven, he sat down at the right hand of God. Okay. Do we have any more information about sitting down at the right hand of God? Come with me to Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8 and verse 1. The Bible says this. 
Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum, summary. We have such and what? High priest. High priest. Who is set on the what? Right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heaven. So do we have an additional information about Jesus sitting down at the right hand of God there? He is sitting at the right hand of God as what? High priest. Thank you. We, put, we are putting the pieces of the puzzles together, right? Okay. So, after the death of Jesus, he went up to heaven. He sat down at the right hand of God. And he is sitting there as our high priest. Okay. So then, what is the main work of the high priest? According to the Bible. Intercession, but let's get it from the Bible, shall we? Hebrews 7 and verse 25. Hebrews 7, verse 25. Are you there? It says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make what? Intercession for them. Verse 26. For such and what? High priest. So the Bible makes it very clear. The main work of high priest is what? Intercession. So ladies and gentlemen, let me just put all these things together and ask you another simple, logical question. Here we go. Jesus, according to the Bible, after his death, when he got resurrected, when he went up to heaven, I'm fast forwarding the touch me not to Mary in 40 days with disciples, okay? He went up to heaven. Are you with me? The Bible says he sat down at the right hand of God as high priest, doing the work of intercession. So, what does it mean when he stands up? The work of intercession is finished. Turn your Bibles now with me to the book of Romans. Romans to make this thing even crystal clear. In the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. And verse 34. Romans chapter 8 and verse 34. Are you there? Yeah. I think we have somebody here in the audience who likes to study the book of Romans. God bless you. Um, he, uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 34, the Bible says, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is Risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes what? Intercession for us. So ladies and gentlemen, so what does it mean? When Jesus stands up, intercession is finished. No more intercession. So we're so here thinking, I thought the mercy and the Grace and intercessory work of God continues forever. No. Believe it or not, this is a strange thing. The Bible calls it God's mercy has limits. How do I know? Jesus said, Like the days of Noah, it shall be in the days of days before the Son of Man come. So what happened in the days of Noah is an example of what it will happen in the future. In the days of Noah, God gave those people 120 years. And after all those years, God gave the last chance by demonstrating all these animals marching in. And they still had the opportunity 
But when they refuse, refuse, reject, 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 God had no choice but to close the door. So that was there, the close of probation. No more intercession, so to speak. Are you with me? That kind of thing will happen again for the whole world, again in the future. Again, we're not talking about another arc, but probation, grace period, intercessory work will be finished someday. And the Bible says, Michael, stand up. What does that mean? All the decisions are made up by the individuals. God gave all these people ample opportunities to choose Him, to believe in Him. But they all made up their mind. So at the end, he stands up, probation closed. Therefore, Michael stand up, it means his kingdom is beginning. At the same time, probation is closed. Are we together? So then, when the Bible says, at that time, Shall Michael stand up? What does that mean? At that time, probation will close. Now we are more curious about then what time? Yes or no? It says at that time, right? What time is that? I want to know when the probation is going to close. Uh, by the way, when you come back here tomorrow, don't expect this Korean brother to tell you probation is going to close 2012, December 21. <laughs> no. There is no specific date given to us. No specific date, year, month. However, when the Bible says, at that time, shall Michael stand? That time is pointing to an event that was already mentioned in the previous verse. So when that event takes place, you can know that the probation is going to close very soon. Are you with me? Are we together? So when you come back tomorrow, we are going to study about at that time. This is a big topic. So I need all my speaking hours to explain at that time. So don't miss it. But the Bible makes it so clear. At that time, Michael shall stand. And again, who is Michael? Archangel, Jesus. That name is connected to Jesus as he is the captain, but his voice can raise the dead. Look right here. Go back to Daniel 12. Daniel 12. You will see them. You'll see it again. Listen. The Bible is so consistent. Daniel 12, verse 1, at that time shall Michael what? Stand up. The great prince which standeth for the what? Children of thine people. And there shall be what? Time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, what? Thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the what? In the book. And look at this. And many of them that what? Sleep in the dust 
of the earth. Many that are what? <clears throat> Sleep in the dust. Do you take that literally? Do you know anybody sleeps in the dust? Cover themselves in the dust and take a nap? Yes or no? No. So what is it talking about? Sleep in the dust. They are dead. They're resting in peace under six feet, okay? Six feet under. They're dead. Sleep in the dust of the earth. Shout next word, please. Awake. What's that mean? Resurrection. Exactly. There you have it. Michael, stand up. He's going to deliver his people. Those who are alive, he will protect them. But those who are dead, he's going to raise them from the grave. But who will be raised from the grave? The Bible says everyone's names are written in the book. If you want, if you want the rest of the story, come back tomorrow. Then you will see how all these little pieces come together to tell us a final message for our time. In closing, this picture of <clears throat> Jesus stand up, yes, close probation, this picture was, was used once in the Bible. Do you, remember, do you remember when Stephen was being stoned? Go there with me, quickly, in the book of Acts. Acts. Chapter 7. And the Bible says, just before Stephen died, he saw something in heaven. And what was that? Acts chapter 7 and verse 55, the Bible says, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the what? Glory of God and Jesus doing what? Standing on the right hand of Very interesting. Uh, it is our understanding that that same year, or at the same time, there was a close probation for the Israel. And Jesus used the same imagery, standing up, to portray, to give the message. Probation is closed. At the same time, Jesus was standing up and let Stephen see So that Stephen, before he goes to sleep, before he dies, he dies with assurance yeah. that he will be dead in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And by the voice of the archangel, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yeah. Yeah. What a wonderful gift that God gave to Stephen. Before his death, he was able to see Jesus standing up at the right hand of God. You know why God gave that gift, that vision to Stephen? You know why? Because Stephen, he loved Jesus so much. Jesus was everything to him. Because of that, Stephen became so much like Jesus. He became so much like Jesus that the religious leaders said regarding Stephen, 
they saw angels' face on his face. And this same Stephen, before he died, he saw Michael, the archangel, Jesus, standing up at the right hand. Let me ask you something. You know, when people die, just before they die, they think about the most important, important thing in their life. And usually it's about family, it's about relationship. And that's that's beautiful and that's, that's good. But my question to you is this, even without the vision of Jesus from heaven, if God allows you to die before he comes back, what will be your consuming thought before you think? that rest in the ground. What is going to be the most important thought? Is it going to be your fame, your wealth, your talents, your position? What thought? Perhaps all of you are saying, oh, um, for sure, before I die, before I die, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna think about God and Jesus. Just like a thief on the cross. Lord, remember me. Yeah? I, I don't even perhaps thinking this way. But let me tell you something. But maybe, 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 maybe not. Because all of you, you practice You practice dying every day when you go to sleep. Yes or no? You practice dying every day when you go to sleep. So what is your, your last thought before you go to bed? Whatever that is, perhaps that is going to be your final thoughts before you die. The question is, is Jesus the first and the last and the best in your life? Yeah. What imaginations, what videos, what pictures do you run in your mind as you're resting at night? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, someday Michael shall stand up. Jesus will stand up. Which means he will come back. Yeah. And he's coming back to deliver his people. Yeah. And his people are his people because their thoughts are always on things above and focused on Jesus. Amen. Is that your life? Our life? What is your thought on this? If you wish to go deeper, think deeper. Get serious with God. Amen. Stand with me as we pray this evening. <laughs> Loving Heavenly Father, tonight we only study a very short phrase. 
Michael Stender. But Lord, perhaps you are anxious to stand up. But at the same time, you are not so anxious to stand up because there are too many, too many people that are not ready. So you are lingering, you are hesitating, you are applying your blood before the mercy seat because you love us so much. May we embrace this love to have complete transformation in our life. <coughs> transform our hearts. Transform our thoughts. That our minds can stay upon you. Help us, O oh God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated.